Hey guys, I'm back, and I have a, a new brand I have never looked at before. I found this on Drop, the artist formerly known as Mass Drop. We're gonna talk about that in a second, but this is CJRB. What does that stand for? No clue. What is it though? It's a budget line put out by Artisan Cutlery. So I want you to think about this brand to Artisan as Tangram is to um, Kaiser. So it is made in China, but Artisan Cutlery puts out really good stuff, but it, a lot of it comes with a pretty significant price tag. So CJRB, Kudrub, probably not supposed to pronounce that that way. Um, it, so, so it's, you know, a more affordable, it's, uh, I don't want to call it budget either because it's not cheapo stuff. It, it looks, it appears to me, I've looked over a few of their different products, good stuff in a more affordable price range. Um, there's probably still people that this would be outside of their general spending, you know, patterns or, or ability and everything. But uh, what is this one? I actually forgot the name. Does it, it's the Tala. That's what this one is. Um, so I found it on uh, Drop. I don't know why they changed their name. Ridiculous. What is Mass Drop? So number one, I have a referral link in the video description. If you use that referral link, if you're not already signed up for it, I know a lot of you guys are. If you use that link, you will, um, once you order and receive your first item on there, they have tons of stuff, guys, in so many different categories. You will receive $10 worth of credit for your next whatever you want on the website. And my channel will as well. Anything that I that I buy with that referral credit automatically goes into the giveaway bucket for whenever we do a giveaway thing. So everybody wins and they have tons of stuff. I can't remember um, the exact discount that I got on this, but it, it was a good little bit of savings compared to the going uh, MSRP rate that you find this for on most sites. So here is the Tala. Uh, it's put together pretty well, actually. Um, it has a feel of, I don't know, solid knife. Uh, if you see here, we've got perfect centering, quite a bit of space between the blade and the, the liners. I mean, just lots of space. I don't know, open design here. Um, fit and finish is pretty much perfect. Everything lines up great. However, this is showing up in this light on your screen. This is gray G10, advertises gray. It looks, has a little bit of that bluish gray look. Same kind of bluish gray that Skiff uses and some, a few other companies. Excellently, uh, CNC milled, great texture on this scale. Nice look to that pivot. Mm -hmm. Very simple construction. Uh, we can see that the clip is positionable, so it comes set up right hand tip up, but also can be positioned for left hand tip up. No tip down. I'm okay with that. Nice big lanyard hole over there. Uh, simple flipper. There's, I don't see any jimping anywhere on this at all. So in terms of grip on the knife, you have your um, milling on the scales, but Nothing to help your finger get a little bit of a grip on the flipper, nor on the blade or anywhere else for later on. Not even on the, the liner lock over there, which is kind of odd, right? Different. I don't know. Nice looking barrel spacers, though. Very uh, kind of a clean, simple look for the knife, which is cool. Doesn't look like there's a lot of markings on the blade. And it is serialized, which is cool. Pretty nice. Ball bearings in there, by the way. Just about everything's coming with ball bearings. I remember when, when ball bearings was like a high-end premium selling point, and like everything's got it now. It's a really nice blade shape. So at first, if you look just real real close, it almost looks like a Warncliffe blade, but it's got just ever so slightly a curve in it, which really makes it more of a sheep's foot. Um, and I, I like it. It's very aggressive looking, you know, which... If I know some people are concerned with how the knife looks out in the world, you know, what are people going to perceive it as? Not everybody cares. Some people do. It does have kind of a scary shape. I think it's kind of a cool shape. Um, I like the way your thumb can sit along the spine. A jimping, once again, would be nice to have. A very EDC 
friendly size though. I think if I remember the specs correctly, it's about 3.4 inches. Great, beautiful stone wash going on there on the blade. Very nice action. Um, it, I mean, it's smooth. It's very smooth. I feel like with time, though, it would break in and just be able to, actually, that's pretty nice. But, wow. So let's see. So this is push button. And that, I feel like, is almost instantaneous. Like, I feel like that's actually faster than most um, automatics I've had. I mean, just let's do it one more time. Check it out. That's ridiculously fast. Uh, and then let's do a light switch. Nice. I feel like sort of, yeah. I was going to say, I feel like if you don't really give a lot of pressure on the light switch, though, and I, I'm intentionally giving it a little bit of weak flip there, you do need to overcome the detent. So if you're used to giving it a good flick light switch wise, it's fine. But if you just, there, oh, I flicked it there. Okay. Yeah, it's breaking in as we speak, but with the push button, I mean, it's it's engineered to just snap right out there and it's it, great action. I just, for people out there who like to do the light switch kind of flip, um, you really have to make, you, re, you really have to mean it <laughs> to get it to go. Um, but great feel, great weight. It feels very light in my hand. Very light. It's pretty comfortable, except the clip. I feel the clip a little bit there in my hand. A little more than I want to. Not terribly uncomfortable or anything like that. It's just I definitely know that it's there. I definitely feel it. Um, the blade, though, looks fantastic. Check out that that tip. I mean, if you've got some fine, fine work to do, that's awesome. I, I love the action on it. I do. Um, and I think that, you know, a few years ago, this knife, these materials, this action would be a lot more expensive than it is right now. You know, the market changes, the materials change. D2, we're going to have the same discussion we always do. A lot of people out there don't like D2, especially Chinese manufactured D2. I like D2 as a steel. Uh, great edge retaining properties. Yes, we're always going to have this debate. So it it is less, less corrosion resistant than others, but you just got to show it a little bit of love and it's going to be fine. It can be more tricky to sharpen, but... The whole point is you have to sharpen it less because that tougher D2 tool steel will hold on to that edge longer. Speaking of edge, um, let's get a piece of paper here. Oof, that feels nice. That feels very nice. Oh, love that feel right out of the package. And one, two, three. That was almost like nothing at all felt great. Let's do the slice. Slice was like absolutely nothing. Um, pushing the tip right down. It makes a really nice sound on this cutting board. Great edge right out of the package. I mean, take it out of the box, put it to work, do whatever you want with it. I think it's a really nice offering from a relatively new brand. So you have, you know, all of the experience, all of the technology, engineering, and everything from Artisan Cutlery behind it, who has produced some really nice knives in the kind of upper price brackets. Um, and unlike, you know, some of some of the companies that do their their higher end and their lower end. You can expect the Chinese alphabet soup steel. I think it's cool that it's a, that it's a more of a, a premium kind of steel. And yeah, I know some of you are going to agree, disagree. D2 is not a premium steel. But remember the time where D2 was definitely considered a premium upgrade steel. You know, you, you pay more for it. Uh, for example, once, time, once upon a time on Benchmade's custom Griptilian builder. It was not considered average, you know. Um, and I know that... The price on it's come down a lot and it's a lot more common but 
you know, typically uh, on the the budget friendly brands, you're expecting something like eight CR thirteen, nine CR thirteen, or even, you know, even lower than that, five or seven CR thirteen. But you've got a really dependable steel, really well done um, fit and finish here. You know, really well done G10 over steel. Um, deep carry clip. I don't know if I mentioned that before. Multi positionable. They put, you know, you've got a, well, it's not a spare screw. I thought I was going to say you got a spare screw, but it's actually just holding in the, the other side of the spiral spacer. But I mean, really nice knife. Um, even is, is big hand friendly, you know, a couple minor things I, I would want to change about the positioning of some jimping. Oh, you know what? Let's, uh, let's take a look where the lockup is there. Okay. Ready? I don't really think that lockup has changed at all. Little bit of stickiness there, getting it out, but we have not changed the centering. Centering is still perfect. Action is still perfect. Goes right back to the original lockup. No blade play at all. And no further stickiness, you know, to speak of. Uh, awesome action there. I think it's a really cool knife. Um, I'm glad I checked it out. So again, drop, formerly known as mass drop. Uh, they combine their blades and a couple other categories all into the EDC section. So you can check that out. Um, I, you know, now thanks to mass drop changing or drop consolidating, I really only subscribe now to the uh, the EDC and the outdoors categories, they consolidated a few, but, um, you know, you don't always save a ton of money, but you know, any money you save is, is better, right? And a lot of times they have free shipping. So, you know, use the referral code. If you haven't already signed up, get yourself something. Um, I, I think I saved probably about $9 on this particular one, um, from the, you know, what most other places are, are selling it for. So $9 saved is, you know, still a good deal, right? What do you guys think of CJRB in general? Anybody have more experience with them? I just found out about them, you know, when I was browsing and I saw this. Anybody else have experience? Um, anybody try this particular knife before or anything else from their product line? Um, I guess we'll do the ratings on this one. Uh, I have broken out the collectability and the value of ownership. So now we have 11. So as always, let's do the ratings starting with originality and departure from previous designs so you know i don't know anything else from cjrb um, so i'm just going to judge this as its own design but i'm going to give it a 3.5 because it does the lines on the blade and everything and the handle it, i i couldn't say specifically this comes from crj but you know i couldn't identify it as one of their products i do see a lot of artists uh artists and cutlery lines in their family lines but I, I could see it coming from different different uh manufacturers um yes there's a finite number of handle shapes and blade shapes available but um you know i, I guess we got to give them time to set up their own style and everything but i i have seen this kind of look coming out of artisan cutlery i've i've seen the general shapes from some other companies so 3.5 fit and finish has to get a five i mean beautifully done all around um especially looking at a a more budget friendly um line they did a great job for function and mechanics giving it a four um you know very short breaking in time but First, you don't have any uh, tip-up accessibility for the people that like it, and there is that little little bit of, you know, could be a little smoother doing the light switch flip, but four is still pretty respectable, you know, out of five. Practicality and utility, I'm giving it a four again. Um, there are some people that are going to say for EDC use, this is a, a rather large blade size. They like to keep their EDC blades between two and a half and three inches. I talked about the, it, it can look a little, little mean and scary looking if that's something you care about, which might affect your using it. Um, that very fine tip is, is both a blessing and a curse. You can use it for very fine work. It's probably prone to 
snapping if you use it for, for some rough work. I, I mean, I wouldn't make this a hard use knife. I would use it as a, a rugged EDC knife, but you know, you use your knives as, as you see fit. When it comes to production and out of the box standards, though, you gotta give it a five. I mean, this thing is like laser lightsaber sharp, um, beautiful ball bearing movement. I mean, the action, yeah, besides you gotta just man up and use the flipper, uh, it, the action on it is so smooth and so great. So, I mean, it's just done so well, um, especially the milling on these scales gives you great grip and everything. Which leads me into comfort and feel. Gets a four. Uh, there's not much that I would do to improve this. A little bit of jimping on the spine, maybe on the flipper and on the liner lock, just to make sure you get a good grip and lock your fingers in real well. But besides that, it, it and, and the clip, you know, in your hand a little bit, it's a very comfortable knife to hold. Um, your thumb rests naturally in this little curve in there. I like it. It's, it's uh, got enough real estate for big hands. A couple small improvements they can make, but overall, good. For the cool factor, I, I think it's I think it's got it all the way around. I'm going to give it a five. I think, uh, you know, there's multiple colors and um, carbon fiber available for your scales. So, you know, suit it to your taste. I think that's a really wicked looking blade. Uh, I think it's very functional and it's something that people are definitely going to, you know, it's a, it's a conversation starter, the knife itself. Um, I think, yeah, I think it has that cool factor, especially coming from uh without being gaudy by the way it's a it's a cool conversation starter without being like a gaudy showy knife um, so i think the cool factor is definitely there on this one for quality and materials i'm going to give it a four again now i guess you can upgrade it you can get carbon fiber scales but uh d2 is a fine steel but just you know imagine this this particular knife with this action and, and this design and everything in like a full titanium um, with like an M390 blade. I mean, there's room to go up. It's it's fine as it is, but we can go up from here. Uh, but it, it is a it is a good knife as is. Uh, for value of collectability, so that's our first change. You know, I'm going to give it an average rating three. It's it's a it's a budget friendly, full production knife. I don't anticipate these you know going up a lot in value. Um, I'm sure that there's a large production line of them. So it's average, you know. I'm sure that the value of ownership, though, which I'm giving a 4.5, I'm sure that the use you'll get out of it is much higher than, you know, the collectability value ever will be. Um, so I should, I should clarify, I'm not saying it's not worth having in your collection. I'm just saying the value of having it to use is probably higher than the value of having it as a collector's piece that you think will increase in value and be be worth more later on. That's that's what I'm saying. So the value of ownership is, is 4.5. For the price, less than $40 for what you're getting, definitely. And the value to price ratio is a 4.5. I think that what you're getting for the price you're paying is very good. Um, maybe bring the price down by like, you know, $5, make it perfect, but um, I think you're getting a great product for the price. So that means that the overall score is a 42.2. Not bad, not bad at all. That gives our average score, our final rating, a 4.2. Very respectable, very respectable. I really, uh, you know, I'm glad I checked out this brand. I'll, I'll be checking out more. I'd like to compare some directly to some uh, artisan cutlery blades. I don't own any artisan cutlery blades. I've borrowed some, I've held some, but I just, I haven't found any that really speak to me. I like the design on this. Um, you know, and I'm wondering if artisan cutlery made a direct uh, artisan cutlery version of this, what would they charge for it? You know, with their materials and, their, and everything, so. Uh, love to hear what you guys think of this, the concept, the brand, the design itself and everything else. So uh, please feel free and go. And uh, thanks all you guys uh, after the last video who checked out my, my um, secondary channel about models and stuff. I appreciate it, guys. And that's really cool, you guys who sub to it and are helping me out build that channel, too. You guys are all awesome. You guys are always awesome. I'm always telling you, you're all absolutely awesome. I appreciate every single one of you. And I'll be back again real soon.